Hi and welcome to Unit 2, Topic 3, Video 15. And in this video we're going to be exploring geometric transformations and being really specific about what different transformations do and how we define them as matrices. So just as a note, the formula sheet contains three of the transformations we'll explore here. Not all of them, some of them you'll need to know yourself, but in most cases they're pretty easy to work out. Most of them you'll be aware of, and I'm going to introduce a shear and a projection to you. Across a few videos, of course. So, we'll be considering translations, reflections, shears, projections, dilations and rotations. They're the main things we'll be looking at. And then we'll take the rotations and reflections in particular and look at them in a more robust fashion. We're not just reflecting across the X and Y axes or we're not just rotating around the origin. But again, that will be later. So let's start with basic reflections. We have two reflections that we could be looking at. One is across the x-axis, and the other is across the y-axis. So I've done a little bit of work here. Look at the blue and the black, and you'll see what's happening. And I want to work out what goes inside these matrices, these transformational matrices. You'll see a diagram here as well, where P is the original and P dash is the image. P is pretty common because it's the first letter of the word point. Okay, so we've got the original is reflected across the x-axis to the image. Now you'll see the X hasn't changed at all, but the Y has become negative Y. That's all that happens in this case. So in terms of a matrix that makes this happen, X doesn't change. We don't want any Y component in the X. We don't want any X component in the Y, but the Y becomes negative. And this is our general transformation matrix for a reflection across the X axis. I can now reflect any point, any coordinate. I can now reflect any shape across the X axis using this transformational matrix. Here, I hope, is where this becomes real. This becomes something that's exciting because it's something you can see does a job for us. It has a purpose. We don't have to sit there trying to muck around working out um, coordinates. And better yet, we can program a computer with this. Okay, in B, in the Y axis, you'll note here that the Y stays the same, but the X becomes negative. So we get the same thing, but we get negative 1, 0, 0, 1. Beautiful. How good is that? Um, and this is a common notation for it. X goes to X, Y goes to negative Y. If you get the diagram up and you see, so you don't have to memorize these because I can just build this in my mind. I can look at it, I can draw a diagram for it. What happens when I have a flip across the Y axis? The Y stays as Y, but the X goes to negative X. Easy. Now I can create the transformational matrix. And then we've got a reflection across the line Y equals X. Now this one is a little bit trickier, but it works. And so we're happy with it. Later on, we'll talk about across the line y equals mx. And that's, that is, um, it's actually pretty mathematically easy, but conceptually a bit tricky. So we'll get there. So in this case, if I flip across the line y equals x, we've got the relationship there, y equals x. So I want all my y coordinates to go to x and all my x coordinates to go to y. x goes to y, y goes to x. So I don't want an x component of the x coordinate, but I do want a y component. I do want an X component for the Y coordinate, but I do not want an X component. That is the transformational matrix that will take a point and reflect it across the line Y equals X. Magic. And then we also have across the line Y equals negative X. So what happens when we have Y equals negative X? Well, we get the same thing. Blue, the blue line is Y equals negative X, by the way. But this time, X goes to negative Y and Y goes to negative X. So we had the same thing as above, but it's 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. And you can explore other variations of that if you want to, but they're the main four simple cases. So let's have a look at a quick example. At the point 2, 3 is reflected across the line y equals x, determine the image coordinate p dash through matrix multiplication and sketch. Okay, so the point is 2, 3. We want to do p times by some transformation matrix to get p dash. Now I know p is 2, negative 3, and I know the transformation matrix from above. I want x to go to y and y to go to x. And therefore, um, I'm going to rub that out. When I do that multiplication, I get this um, negative 3, 2. So therefore, p dash equals negative 3, 2. And we do need to do a sketch as well. So 2, negative 3 is down here. 
negative 3, 2 is here. And here is my straight line. Now, if I took the time to do this on Desmos, make it a bit more accurate, you'd be pretty convinced that that has worked exactly how as we expected. Now, you kind of have to take my word for it. The reflection straight across this line, by the way, if we draw the dotted line that goes between, it should create a little right angle there. Okay. Um, so that is our work on reflections. And I'm going to end this video here. All the best.